In Manx and Canyon, the construction industry was booming, which of course means that an old man was single-handedly building electric wind turbines on the hill and huge sandstone watchtowers astride the base approach. Being stonkingly rich these days, Chocolate Baron Nuke could afford a little opulence. The locals didn't like it. The canyon was raided by the reavers and pirates of the outlands more than ever. With harpoons now shooting down from the towers at great distances, all this did little to disturb the day and night academia in Izumi's office. The secrets of the ancients began to emerge from the texts like hashish emerging from a hiver's latrine. The mess coalesced, and soon it was worth putting your hand in to try your luck. What I'm trying and failing to say is that Nuke got his little invention up and running on Azumi's roof. A big copper boiler with all manner of pipes, gauges and heating elements. This brown machine was the green machine. My man, the drug leaves, Nuke called out. Wadston ferries Nuke some dried hemp stalks. My man, the mank, was the next order. Wadston ferried Nuke a bucket of what passed for water around those parts. My man, the hype, was the final command. Uh, my prince, I believe in you, Wadston offered as Nuke started feeding leaves into the top of the boiler. Harder, my man. You can do it, my prince. Live your dreams. I'm doing it, my man. It's really happening. I can't believe it. Get that water shit in there. Hydrate the fucking fire and shit. What was the next step? Gotta turn this. My man, I can't hear you. My prince, you're amazing. I've never seen anything like it. Keep it up, my prince. I won't stop till I reach the top, Nuke exclaimed. He was talking about filling up the boiler, of course, but Azumi couldn't help but wonder just what was happening upstairs. Of course, it was nothing underhanded at all, just some good old-fashioned homebrew drug production. Did it work? To find out, Nuke happily volunteered to test the first batch that came out. According to the prince's own account of events, he then spent several hours frolicking with animals in the long grass, excitedly recounting how one Professor Oak had a very special present for him. Oak? That's a tree on Earth. Has he been secretly reading my science books? He's... he always surprises me, Izumi wistfully commented to herself. If only she knew. In all, Nuke had a great couple of weeks, stirring the hashish pot in a constant daze while Wadston kept him as close to alive as it is comfortable to be. What was everyone else up to? Time off, really, with plenty of lying around, a few folk trying their hand at the farming of both green and brown, and if you got bored, you could always go out and start playing with the corpses outside the gate. If that wasn't enough for you, you could always mine and process tin for Rick, who was locked in his shed the whole time working on his little tin models. It was quite the hobby, but it had become rather suspicious. Rick kept refusing to open the door, demanding that all material be thrown in through the window. And he started adding to the list of materials things that surely weren't relevant. Leather, glass, beads, and most suspicious of all, a sample of the Funtime corpses. This was all eventually organized, as his new skeleton friend Agnew was good at keeping secrets, and no one believed Els when he told the others what Rick was doing in there. What was he doing? It's hard to explain. In fact, there is no particular explanation at all, so I'll just have to give it to you straight. Rick had given himself a little makeover. What the fuck? Nuke screamed. This green is fucking mental! He looks like... like... A human! Izumi exclaimed. Hello, friendos. It's your boy, Red Rick. Guess I'm like Pink Dink or something now. Rick was sporting an entire body of fleshy... flesh. Bald head, bulky physique, beady brown eyes, and beady is very much the right term for it. He was... He's a human! As Aya helpfully pointed out. More like new man, Els said. Yep, that's right, Rick nodded. Coin slot, are you... do you even have a coin slot? Forget I said anything, Nuke memorably said. Rick, do you want to explain yourself? Izumi asked. Nope, this is me now. Still got the stick in here somewhere, so I don't want to hear any back talk. Skeleton look wasn't doing me no good, you know. Got a lot of baggage, that shit. So just shut up 
And let's go leak bodily fluids like a load of genuine fleshies, huh? Man, you freak me out, Nuke said, placing and then immediately removing a hand from Rick's icy cold shoulder meat. But hey, let's leak our fluids with the best of them. Man, you biologicals got a lot of magic in you, you know. Magic? Isaiah said. Wait, you, the skeleton wizard! He shouted, jumping at Rick with outstretched arms. I knew you were real. Same. Damn, I was getting a lot of hugs before, if you know what I'm saying. Rick, you are the answer to the prophecy, Isaiah claimed, but Nuke dragged him away. Don't worry, it's because basically you're a moving corpse, he's got all excited and shit. It's a Shek thing, man, he said. My dad got blazed and told me only a skeleton wizard would save the Empire or something, so that's that. Kind of relevant, actually, because we got some work to do. It's drug running time. Bad Green, I need your goat. Follow me. Never. Why do you need my ass? Gustafsson complained. Because, man, I need to smuggle drugs with your ass. Ah, to contribute to the ascension of a worthy prince would bring pleasure to any ass. Please, Prince Gustafsson, stop talking, Izumi demanded. Never. My ass does not quit, so why should I? This sort of thing carried on for a long time, but the main takeaway is that firstly, Gustafsson's goat had a very funny name, and secondly, bags of hashish were strapped around it for transit back to the imperial capital at Heft. Indeed, it technically wasn't illegal for a goat to possess narcotics, so the scheme was surely watertight. This meant that at long last, Nuke was going home. As a reminder, his plan was to blaze his dad halfway to the big fiery thing in the sky, and then use his compromised state to get Nuke back to being heir, and perhaps a little more than that. Let's see how that goes. Crossing into the Empire's core lands near Heng brought a nostalgic reminder of the land Nuke had left. Gangs of hopeless slavers were all over the place, trying to beat the guild into a valuable pulp. For Rick, the pulp was already sorted, but nonetheless, the slavers were not long for this world. Is this fucking shit, exactly this shit that messes everything up? Nuke said. If his majesty allows it, perhaps we'll finally get a chance to avenge your foul treatment, my prince, Watson said. Even if he doesn't, man. Green Rebellion's brewing, I can smell it. And it's not just ass, either. Well said, my prince. Eventually, they all made it to Heft, and on a good day, too, for it wasn't even under siege by skimmers. They walked right on through the huge city gates with no attention to Sai Gustafsson's ass's bulging bags. The guild was back in town, and all the members who hadn't seen the old HQ could marvel at the history contained within skimmer stakes rotting in crawling wooden boxes, Pages of old light novels pasted on the walls, the characters within staring out with flushed cheeks, and who could miss the strange hole in the ground that dominated the main living area, and the pump that spat out sloppy brown hydration medium with irregular belching wheezes. Truly, it was the best of times. Nuke waded through the mess to get to his old wardrobe, from which he produced his noble attire. He threw aside his cool leather and chainmail getup and bathed in the hydration medium, although the term bathed implies this increased his level of hygiene, which is admittedly misleading. Then, with a few fine threads and a stroke of a skimmer tooth comb, he was about as dapper as an emperor in waiting can get. He asked Gustafsson to hand the goat and its cargo over. He probably said something hilarious like, surrender your ass to me, but these vital details were lost to history, I'm afraid. Then he marched out into the street, with ass in tow, and made the fateful walk up to the Imperial Palace. Seeing him, the guards quickly stowed away their valuables and blocked the doors. Stop right there, my lord, you were not summoned. I was actually man, go tell dad I've brought him the secret of the skeleton wizard. What the fuck are you talking about, my lord? Just do it! Alright, if you let me stroke your goat there. Man, if you knew its name, that would be so funny. Ah, classic. Go on then. The deal was undertaken, and a samurai soon returned from upstairs. Yeah, he kept repeating skeleton wizard, and started banging the arm of the throne. I think this might actually be something, he reported. 
Thus, Nuke was allowed to proceed up to the very heart of the Empire, wreathed in a strange aromatic smoke. He waved his way through it towards the throne. Dad, what's all this shid? he asked. Tengu was slumped on the throne with a charred lump of something in his hand. Green boy! Green boy, is that you? It's your only child, whose name I leave to you to remember. What's with this smoke? We ran out. Nothing left. Had to smoke this weird ass bread. Golden brown, they called it. Don't do shit for me, boy. Didn't do shit. It's like waking up at high noon, this shit. It's like finding out your sister stole your music box, this fucking shit. Green boy, gotta save me. I'll give you anything. How about everything? Yeah, I got one of those. It's yours, green boy. Well, that's all I needed to hear. You, write that down, Nuke said to a guard in the corner. Oh, and then close your eyes. I'm about to reveal what I've hidden in my... Oh, forget it, you need to know the context for it to be funny. Drugs time! Finally, all of Nuke's hard work, which may or may not have actually been performed by Nuke himself, was going to pay off. One by one, he revealed blocks of cool, crumbly hashish, drawing desperate pants from the Emperor. By the time everything was unloaded, Tengu's throne was positively fortified with premium mank-boiled green. Ocrins, drooping. Earlobes, Tengu whispered. He reached out and stroked his hand across the epic supply. It crumbled against his fingers, the pieces dancing a gentle invitation as they fell away. He stood from the throne, opened his arms, and swung face down into the mighty pile. It exploded everywhere, kicking up a mucky fog that shooed the brown smoke away. This was truly a beautiful metaphor. When it cleared, Tengu was standing again, perfectly still. He looked at Nuke. Nuke, it's you. Dad, you feel inhuman? Man, I ain't felt this human in a long time, he said, grabbing Nuke for a fragrant hug. My boy's here and I'm back on top. Yeah, baby, come on, let's get some air and shit. Nuke and Tengu went down to the dining hall, where the open doors brought in a refreshing desert night wind. There, Nuke had quite the tale to tell. And so in the end, I was like, suck my sword, and they all laughed, and then I killed them all, Nuke was saying. I don't think the tale he told was quite the same one as I've recounted so far, but I suppose it hit a few similar beats. And then the Goat King opened his mouth, and there he was, standing in the flames, the bilge maker himself, Seperon. Okay, I don't know what story he told, but to be fair, he was caught in that hashish explosion too. Tengu asked to meet the guild Nuke was talking about, and they were summoned up to the palace also. Damn, boy, you got a real freak show here, Tengu commented. Your Majesty, you honor us with your praise, Isaiah said. We are indeed rather aside from the usual path life might ask of us, but that is precisely why we have come so much further along than those less fortunate. This is my corpse carrier, he's the Prince of the Shek Kingdom, Isaiah, Nuke explained. I don't believe it. My boar making links like a smith. Prince Isaiah, you've done my boar right, and so you've done me and your mama right. This is the good stuff that the good stuff gives you, you know. I will ponder these surely wise words, Isaiah said. And Dad, this is uh, Izzy, Nuke said, suddenly clamming up. Your Majesty, Your Highness, I am forever in your debt. Please excuse my humble presence, Izumi groveled. Ah, who's she then, your girlfriend? Tengu asked. The guild was silent. The atmosphere was as delicate as a brick of green. Y uh, y yeah. Nuke managed to say. Everybody was uproariously cheering, or sneering, on the inside, I expect. But in action, all that happened was Azumi stared at Nuke in shock. Nuke, I mean, your majesty, I wouldn't dare, she blurted out. Dare away, about time this kid got a proper relationship. <laughs> oh, uh, did he not? Uh... Nope, real loser, this guy. Dad, please, I was busy and I had commitments, Nuke said. 
Yeah, commitments to your goddamn Japanese picture books. <laughs> At least you finally got it out of your system, huh? Sure, totally. Good. That's no hobby for a 20-year-old man to be obsessing over. What? You're 20? Izumi gasped. Yeah, so what? Nuke shot back. But you look... you look like... your eyes and your face. <laughs> Don't worry about that, my child. Tengu laughed. He's been on the blazing blocks too long, little dreg. Screws you up in the face after a while. Yeah, he looks goddamn 35 at least. Get goggles, man. The goggles, they do everything. So wait, how old are you? Nuke asked Izumi. Uh, a little older than that. I'm 251. Hells added. You all require fishman juice, Gustafsson reminded them. What a bunch you are, Tengu said. If you're done introducing yourself to each other, let's get some sit down and see what's what. There was some clarification of the real story to Tengu at this point, and as he heard it, he could not help but be both impressed and humbled. Shit, Nuke. I've been a real deadbeat. And you saved me. You're a superhero. Green boy, he said. I wanted to do it, most of the time. I mean, what I really want is to be back in and stuff. I want to be the prince, you know? You are the prince. Consider your delightful crimes absolved, Tengu shouted, drawing a cheer from the guild. Damn, my boy, my only boy, how could I be so blind? I ain't never gonna give you up, never gonna let you down. Not this shit again, Rick commented. What the? That's a skeleton voice you got, man, Tengu said, scrambling over to Rick. Yep, deal with it, big shot, or deal with my stick. Dad, do you know about the skeleton wizard? Nuke said. Skeleton wizard? What the fuck is that? Oh, it don't matter. Anyway, this robo's a new man. It's a thing now, I don't know. New man? That's some real shit. With a get-up like that, you could sneak right into the Holy Phoenix's ten-story latrine and give him a stick to remember. Yeah, uh, what's the deal with all that Holy Nation stuff? It's bad, son. It's real bad. Can't take it. Those freaks want to burn everything. My captains ain't got nowhere in a year, and I don't even know what happened since the green ran out. Nuke, it's like, you said you wanted to be a prince. Being a prince comes with a lot of shit, and this right here is just it. Holy Nation's gonna be grinding us down day in, day out, until either Az or Ocran sorts it out. You've proven to me that you have enough drugs to solve any problem. So I've got to ask it to you again. Help me, Nuke. You're my only hope. If you give me the power, I'll give you the peace, man, Nuke said. You got all the power you need. But you'll have mine as well. Ruling Prince Nuke Tashino is here, and this empire's gonna get behind him no matter what, Tengu declared. This declaration was made real without delay. Messengers ran off to inform the whole empire that Nuke was officially back on the books, nay, on the cover of the book. The green boy was the green prince, in line to be the green emperor. But Tengu was right. The Holy Nation, whom the guild have successfully avoided thus far, had armies ready to wipe the world clean of all those they hated. Skeletons, Hivers, Shek, and any human who didn't shine as bright as Okran's icy light or couldn't grow a decent beard in short order. Basically, they hated everything. You know how that goes, these guys show up in all kinds of places. Right next to Nuke's empire was the wrong place, and right as he was planning to spread his poorly defined drugs-based utopia to the world was the wrong time. Something had to be done. Thus was the next chapter in Nuke's tale decided upon. However, there is one little detail of this royal reunion worth explaining. After everyone was returning back to the guild's properties, Izumi dallied for a moment in the throne room, admiring the mess the hashbash had left. There was the throne, empty. She walked up to it, saw that no one was around, and took a seat. It wasn't that comfy, she thought, but then she suddenly had a very important revelation. She was the actual confirmed girlfriend of the second most powerful noble in the empire. She, poor little Azumi, strung along for months by a man significantly younger than her as it turned out, was in line to be empress. What would the world of the Green Emperor and the Greasy Empress be like? Let's see where this dream takes us.